Hi, welcome to this week's fireside chat from my kitchen. Uh, even though the sun isn't shining in the window because I've got the curtains because we need to have uh, studio lighting, which just means I've got a light fixture from my bedroom down sitting across from me, shining on my face behind some tissue paper to take the glare off my forehead. Apparently the, I've got a lot of forehead on which it can glare. Nevertheless, it's good to be with you. Thanks to Judy Zerubic, who's on the other end of this recording and making sure all the tech looks good and is in order and is well prepared. Uh, and also thanks to Terry Boyd, who renders this recording uh, up to our YouTube channel, uh, where you're watching this right now. Um, I must admit that during this pandemic, uh, or even before the pandemic, I had a few friends who compete in games of online Scrabble. However, during this pandemic, their passion has almost become an obsession as they sought to pass the time while isolated. Maybe they need to cancel their subscription, but you know, there could be consequences if they do. There are other consequences when we have been staying home so much more during this pandemic and it might lead to a feeling of conspiracy theories. If we have had to incorporate new practices into our routines, those practices that are reinforced come from the most unexpected sources. I had to include a cartoon for, uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, the most famous uh, uh, monster in Scotland, because after all, my ancestry comes from Scotland. Uh, e indeed, during this pandemic, even dating has had to change under the pressure. For those carefully staying at home, over-familiarity with others in the household may have relational consequences. Even our children have had to adjust their play practices. Yeah, I'll warn you, there's a lot of puns this morning. Nevertheless, we follow public health authorities to keep one another as safe as possible. Even looking out for one another, the burden is high. Or to twist the Charles Dickens opening quote from his book, A Tale of Two Cities, For many of us, this is how it feels these days as time loses meaning. And who knows whether December will be any better than the months in between. Maybe when the choir returns to leading us in worship, this is the kind of mask they might wear. I think it looks sharp but you may think it falls flat. After wearing it for an interval, choir members might develop a staph infection and a clef chin. Maybe wearing such masks will lead to trouble. It could be a major problem, but a minor inconvenience. It may lead to a diminished opinion of the mask. I'm not sure if my enthusiasm for it is decomposing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those are terrible puns, but I couldn't resist. Um, but they were particularly for those in our family of faith who love puns. Uh, and many of them may well be watching this later and shaking their head. Nevertheless, I must admit, they were music to my ears. As I was preparing for this fireside chat, I came across a song video written and performed by Nathan Bile, with background singing by Andrew Parkhouse. It was produced to raise donations for Women's House here in Concordon. It made me think about our community and about how we are connected with everyone in this town. I want to share it with you now.
Admit, I've never seen Queen Street look so chishy. <laughs> I chose this video about our community and about the joys of living in community the day before I was in the local Circle K convenience store buying a newspaper. We were all lined up to make our purchases, and it was close to the maximum number of people allowed inside the store. That's when I noticed there was one person in line who had a mask hanging off one ear, but not covering their nose and mouth. Judgment rose up quickly in my mind. I wanted to tell the person they needed to put their mask on properly, a self-righteousness welled up within me. I was getting ready to say something when I recognized who it was. This person was a member of our congregation, and immediately I hesitated. In my hesitation, I realized how easy it is to judge. It's more difficult to understand. Why? Because understanding requires compassion, patience, and a willingness to believe that good hearts sometimes make poor choices. It was only because I knew this person that I paused. My rush to judge was beaten back by the relationship we had. After all, through my judging, we separate. Through understanding, we grow. After my hesitation, I asked the person, how were they doing? 
That's when they entered into a con when we entered into a conversation about asthma and how a mask over that person's mouth and nose caused that person to feel quite ill, as much out of panic as not being able to breathe in enough oxygen. And I was chagrined. My initial judgment did indeed separate us. When I chose to take the time to have a conversation, my understanding allowed me to grow. I was shamed by my initial reaction. I wanted to erase the previous 10 minutes and have a fresh slate to start over, to cover up my boo-boo. However, if I could erase all the mistakes of my past, I would also erase all of the wisdom of my present. I needed to remember this lesson and not so much the, the disappointment. But an hour later, I was walking along the Burnside Trail in town. I needed to clear my mind and to ponder what I had learned about myself and how better to interact with others in this time of pandemic. I, I needed to harvest the wisdom of my misguided judgment. As I walked, I looked around me at the trees and the forest, at the flora and the fauna, feeling God's energy connecting everything around me and with me, noticing the power of this interdependency with all things. I looked around me again as I thought. So many in our society preach independence, autonomy, self-determination. They tell us to pursue happiness, that happiness is good and suffering is bad, that growth is good and restraint is bad, but Happiness without the balance of sorrow grows no wisdom. Unrestrained growth is what we call cancer. Instead, as I looked around, as I breathed deeply of the life and of the decay, as I became ever more deeply aware of the interweaving of life and death in creation, I came to realize once again that we are all interdependent. We are all vulnerable. I am vulnerable to judgment. Instead, I need to readjust my approach to others in our collective interdependence. As Matashona Daliweo, Canadian-based philosopher, entrepreneur, and author has observed, jealousy says, compete with each other. Envy says, destroy each other. Empathy says, help each other. Love says, empower each other. If then we follow the path of empathy and of love, we show kindness to one another. Considering the Black Lives Matter movement, considering the many generations of struggle for our indigenous siblings, considering how systemic racism has affected people of color, we know, all, we know that our judgments affect our perceptions. Instead, God calls us to look at each person without the kind of immediate judgment that I fell into at the Circle K convenience store. Love and kindness have no color. If we show empathy and live in love, we continue to live more deeply into what the Lord requires of us all. From the prophet Micah, what we are required by God to do is, is to do is to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with God. It was unjust for me to judge first only to listen and learn later. Instead, to do justice was to engage in conversation, even if that person had not been a member of the congregation, and then to grow in my wisdom through kindness which recognizes our interdependence. To love kindness was to eschew righteous indignation so that I could treat the other person as a human being worthy of my care and consideration. To walk humbly with God is to recognize the potential in each of us to do good and to be kind. It is certainly challenging. Why, it actually rubs against the ways our society has taught us. However, 
it is the way of Jesus that is rooted in loving kindness. In fact, the real kindness is when I am ready to give up something that I need for myself. In this case, giving up my judgment in favor of fostering healthy relationships, giving up my self-righteousness in favor of seeking understanding, giving up my power in favor of vulnerability to deeper learning. I want to share with you another video that was first shared with me by Fran Gannett. It is a short animated film that won an Academy Award for short animated films. It demonstrates the way of Jesus that embraces empathy, self-giving love, and kindness. through giving up what we truly want for another, that we find our vulnerability as well as our strength. It is recognizing our interdependence as God's way of weaving us together into a whole so that we can find our meaning in life. It is the way of empathy, of love, and of kindness. Notice in this picture, the intricate nature of the greats ironwork. This is an example of traditional Celtic spiritual symbolism. It depicts, it depicts the complex weaving of life in such a way 
that the observer cannot truly see with a glance where one figure begins and where the next one, begin, next one ends. That is the truth of loving kindness to which we are called. It is only when we take the time to foster relationships with one another, to understand and to engage, that we discover the rewards of the way of Jesus. I pray that it will be so for all of us when we are tempted to judge. Now, this is a prayer that was written by our moderator, the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Bach. He wrote it as he was putting on his face mask one day it seems rather appropriate considering my experience at the Circle K convenience store this past week. Let's pray. Creator, as I prepare to go into the world, help me to see the sacrament in the wearing of this cloth mask. Let it be an in outward sign of an inward grace, a tangible and visible way of living love for my neighbors as I love myself. Christ, since my lips will be covered, uncover my heart, that people would see my smile in the crinkles around my eyes. Since my voice may be muffled, help me to speak clearly, not only with my words, but with my actions. Holy Spirit, as the elastic touches my ears, remind me to listen carefully and full of care to all those I meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and each breath that it holds be filled with your love. In your name and in that love, I pray may it be so. Amen. Well, that's the uh, pretty much the end of this fireside chat. So until next week, uh, I uh, look forward to uh, uh, you having a great week as we continue to live into stage three of this pandemic, slowly, carefully reopening during the usual summer tourist season. I'd like to leave you with a blessing written by John Birch. To me, it speaks clearly about walking humbly with our God each day. Guiding God, be with us in our going out and coming home, in our journeying and returning in our decision-making and organizing. Guarding God, be with us through the calm and storm. Be our helper when we are failing. Gracious God, walk with us every moment of this new day. Go in peace then until next time. Goodbye till next week.